All right, I'm gonna get us going. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you from wherever you're joining us today. Thank you all so much for coming out. This is Duffel's first ever webinar. My name is Tyler. I lead growth here at Duffel. And unfortunately for you all, you're stuck with me as your MC for the next hour. So we're incredibly excited today to be joined by folks from around the world. We have people from all corners of the industry, representatives from the airlines, OTAs, TMCs, and new travel startups. It's our hope today that everyone leaves this session excited about the future of travel and maybe even with some new ideas for your businesses moving forward. This will be the first of a series of webinars that we'll be hosting here at Duffel this year. And we'll have a poll at the end today to ask you all about future topics that you'd like us to cover. If at any point today you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A section of the Zoom. We're gonna have a section at the end, a Q&A with our speakers, where we'll try to answer as many of those questions as possible live on this webinar. So with that, I wanna introduce our speakers for today. The first is our CEO and co-founder, Steve Doman. And the second is a man who's worn many hats. Many of you might know him as our former head of airline partnerships. He's now our head of product, Tim Rogers. So what are we gonna to cover today? We have a pretty jam-packed agenda, hopefully some fun pieces. We'll have Steve cover where we see the future of travel and some emerging trends we're seeing over the next few years. He's then gonna jump backwards and look at the early days of Duffel and why he decided to build the company. From there, Tim will take us through the product vision. He'll take us through the product roadmap and where we see Duffel evolving and fitting into that future of travel vision. I'll wrap up today with a few pieces on our response to COVID and how we're approaching 2021 and helping the industry recover. And then we'll do a live Q and A with the group as a whole. So with that, I wanna pass it off to Steve to take us through the future of travel. I'm gonna stop sharing. And... Thank you, Tyler. Hello everyone. I'm gonna be quickly sharing my screen. All right, should be good to go. So as Tyler said, uh, we wanted to kick off today by um, talking about some of the emerging trends that we're seeing in the, in the travel industry uh, over the next uh, decade, or at least the decade that we are in now. As you all know, uh, 2020 has been a very challenging year. Um, IATA called it the most profound deconnecting of modern society since World War II. Travel was down 66%, um, but it was a time where innovators and travel companies have been rethinking the way we travel, all the way from shopping to arriving at your destination. Some of the trends that we're going to present have been underway uh, for a few years, uh, but we see the 2020s uh, as the inflection point where they really take off. So let's dig in. The first one, the first trend is about speed. Uh, we are bound to see a return of supersonic flights uh, within the next, uh, within the decade. There are companies like Boom, Exosonic, Aerion that are leading the way. Uh, I'm personally very excited about uh, the three and a half hours flight from London to New York. Uh, never got to fly on the Concorde, so this would be a first. And for those of you that think that supersonic is not fast enough, Elon Musk is also confident that we would be flying his rockets halfway around the globe in less than an hour. Um, speed is going to dramatically alter travel behaviors. It means more demands, more trips, prices will get cheaper, uh, just a new way of looking at travel. The second trend is that journeys are going to become frictionless. There are several aspects here. It's unlikely for those of you that have traveled uh, over the last year that you will want to go back to the pre-COVID e airport experience. Queues, lines of security, long wait, um, and there are technologies uh, that, gonna, that are going to massively help there. So facial recognition, uh, automated backdrops are going to become the new normal, touchless check-ins. So that's, that's going to be very exciting to, to, to see. And then there is a growing Gen Z. Uh, so 
the, the new generation that is uh, taking over millennials. So they actually took over uh, millennials last year as the largest population in the world. And 98% of them are, are smartphone. So they will expect providers to come to them. They'll want to book on Instagram, ask questions on Twitter, and change their flights on WhatsApp. They will book their trip at the last minute. They will want to mix business and leisure. And tech has a huge role to play uh, by breaking down the silos and enabling that travel experience to be embedded anywhere and everywhere. Uh, we definitely want to live in a world where you, if your flight is delayed, um, the rest of your trip is automatically adjusted. The ride shared uh, get, get changed, your hotel check-in time uh, gets adjusted, and the restaurant reservation might be pushed back by a day. The last trend, and one that we are particularly fond of at Duffel, is that the power is going to go back to the innovators. Um, I was once drunken with one of our airlines partner that travel is an incredibly open industry as long as you are inside. And, and I think it highlights some of, the, some of the issues. There are 27 million developers in the world. It's growing, that number is growing 20% year on year, give or take. And they are increasingly changing the world around us uh, from the way we work, the way we connect with our loved ones, the way we eat, exercise, and so on and so forth. They, in order to, to do their job, they need to have access to the, the infrastructure that powers travel. Um, and we need to democratize that infrastructure uh, to enable these entrepreneurs, these innovators, these developers to rewrite the rule book and fast track us into that future. Uh, all of these like frictionless experience that, that I was talking about pre previously. And that sort of leads us um, nicely into uh, the Duffel story. So we, um, we started the company um, on the back of a very simple idea. Uh, nothing as revolutionary as supersonic planes or AI-backed travel assistant. Um, it was just a simple website uh, to generate package weekend getaways. So as, as a user, you would get on the website, um, figure, uh, select a couple of criteria, and then we wanted to recommend destinations and then automatically book the trip for you. And back then we were very naive and we were thinking, well, accessing travel content can't be that hard. Uh, surely uh, there are APIs that we can use and um, we can sign up online and then get started straight away. And um, that's when we started discovering the world of travel. Um, the GDS first, uh, PNRs, uh, EMDs, um, fares, and all of these, um, all of these knowledge that, that you really need to understand in the industry. And it's very easy to get lost uh, as, a, as a newcomer. And, um, and, and we definitely did. And I guess while our background wasn't travel, um, we still knew a lot about software and we still knew a lot about APIs and, and open systems. And we also had seen um, other industries open up. So uh, in payments, you have company, companies like Stripe. In compute, you have companies like AWS. In telecom, companies like Twilio. So these players came in and democratized and enabled a new generation of experience to be built on top of them. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to make the list, but uh, some of the most successful companies that we've seen um, um, arising in the next decades have been built on these platforms. And so that's what we wanted to, to bring to travel. Um, we we built the, the platform that we wish existed, a powerful self-serve API that enables anyone to start selling flights in minutes and not months. Uh, Tim will be shortly talking about the vision for the product, uh, going into a bit more details on the on the roadmap, what we've achieved so far. But before that, uh, we want to take a very quick break uh, so that you can ask any question that you have. There is the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. 
and we'll also launch uh, a poll. Thank you very much. Hi there, everyone. I'm Tim and I'm Duffel's head of product. Duffel is a marketplace connecting together airlines with travel sellers. It's my job to make sure that we're building a product that empowers both sides of that marketplace. You've already heard the Duffel story from Steve and seen our focus on enabling innovation and taking away friction. I'm gonna tell you now a bit more about our product vision and then I'll take you through what we built last year and our plans for 2021. If you've got an idea that could be the next, this next big thing in travel, whether that's a new mobile app, a chatbot, an augmented reality experience, or something completely different, today it is so difficult to take that idea and build a new travel business. If you're like me or Steve coming into this industry for the first time with fresh face naivety, you probably think, how hard can it be? You'd expect the hard part of starting a travel business to be hiring a great team or building the shiniest app or acquiring customers, but it isn't. There are so many barriers to overcome if you want to start selling travel. It starts with getting your IATA accreditation and any local license you need for the countries where you're operating and getting access to a GDS so you can search and book. Those are big barriers, but it's not just regulation and licensing and those initial tasks of getting set up that get in the way. It's the tech too. The old fashioned APIs that are the norm in the travel space make integration tough and time consuming with their poor documentation, lack of developer tools and poor support. These all mean that building an integration takes months when modern APIs in other sectors mean that you can say, start collecting payments or making phone calls in minutes. And that's months even for the most basic search and book experience. We're all stuck building an infrastructure that was built 40 years ago, in other words. And if you want to go beyond that basic search and book, for example, allowing customers to change their flights easily or offering paid extras like seats and bags, you're looking at months and months more work. And you want more than just the traditional full service carriers? Forget it. For all that hard work, you don't even get full airline coverage. You can't get all the airlines in one place as many low cost carriers aren't available through GDSs or at least not at competitive prices. So you've got to do all that painful integration work over and over again with more providers. All of this means that travel businesses spend so long doing the boring bits and don't get to focus on what's really interesting, building a great customer experience, building something that customers love. Now at this point, you probably fall into one of two camps. You might be a startup or thinking of launching something, in which case you've probably been nodding along enthusiastically and you've seen these problems yourself. Or on the other hand, maybe you already have a travel business. You might be working at a travel agency or in an airline. You might think that these problems aren't problems for you because you've already done that tough work of getting started. But the truth is that these barriers that I've just been speaking about don't only affect new travel startups. 
These problems of barriers to entry and painful legacy infrastructure actually affect everyone. If you're an existing online travel agent and you want to expand internationally, you're hit by the pain of getting accreditation and access to fares in new markets. It's costly and it slows you down. If you're a travel management company in the business travel space and you want to go beyond the content available in GDSs with more low cost carriers or a wider range of ancillaries or even, or even rich content, you're going to run into these problems too. And of course, these tech limitations affect airlines on the other side of the duffel marketplace. They want to be able to retail their products in the way that Amazon can, but they're held back by legacy technology. What we do at Duffel isn't just about empowering shiny new startups. We're here to empower travel innovators wherever they are, from one man band small startups to the person driving change in a company with tens of thousands of employees. So how do we do that? How do we empower these innovators across travel? APIs empower innovation. They're the building blocks that allow entrepreneurs or the developers they work with to build new apps, new tools, and ultimately new experiences for their customers. In the last decade, APIs have transformed the world. You look at other industries, for example, payments or email or telephony, where great APIs have opened up the market. You can sign up and go in seconds. Let's take Airbnb as an example. When were Airbnb were getting started, people didn't all have smartphones but they were able to use an API platform called Twilio to send text messages to your phone to allow you to have a conversation with your Airbnb host wherever you are in the world. Twilio is a completely open platform. Anyone can sign up and go. There are no sign up fees, no monthly charges. You don't need to own your own telephone network or even your own phone number. It's fast to build businesses and there are no barriers to entry. Something like this does not exist in the travel industry today, or at least it hasn't until now. This isn't a solved problem. There's no open API platform for travel. And this means that getting access to travel inventory and getting started is hard with so much upfront cost and barriers to entry. We're building that open API platform for travel. We connect to more than 20 airlines, a mix of full service carriers and low cost carriers. And of course, we're adding more and more to that 20 every month. And I'll tell you more about that later. We build direct connections rather than going through the traditional gatekeepers like the GDSs. That means that we're not stuck on the same old decades old infrastructure, but instead we're free to forge a new path and enable new possibilities. Going our own way means we can offer flights and ancillaries from low cost carriers like Welling, Southwest and Transavia. Carriers that aren't on the GDSs or who often charge extra on the GDS in order to recoup the expensive distribution fees. But it's not just low cost carriers. Our approach of direct connections also allows us to get the best content from traditional full service carriers. And this is the case because many of these airlines are driving direct connect powered by NDC, which stands for new distribution capability. We have NDC connections to carriers like British Airways, Lufthansa Group, Singapore Airlines, Aegean. These mean that we get the best fares, we avoid GDS fees and we get a wider range of products. So the full range of ancillaries you might find on the airline's website. Direct connections as an approach mean that we have the best content you can get. We take all those airline connections and bring them together into one powerful API, giving developers the building blocks they need to build great customer experiences. Our simple API and great documentation, including step-by-step -step guides, allows developers to integrate in days rather than the months that it takes with our competitors. And the beauty of the Duffel platform is that we make it so simple to go beyond just search and book with a single integration for paid extras like bags and seats across our airlines. So why does this matter? All of this together means that travel sellers can build faster. They can add new features and they can focus on what customers really want rather than on how to get access to airline content. This is a big win for new sellers, existing sellers and airlines alike. But it isn't just about the tech. We talked earlier about the barriers to entry and Duffel is also here to tear those down. Duffel isn't only open to existing travel sellers. If you're new to travel, we give you everything you need to get started right out of the box. When you sign up, you get access to airlines reservation systems. You get access to an IATA accreditation, which you can use and agreements with airlines so you can start selling flights on day one with no extra steps. Whether you're an existing travel seller or you're brand new, you can sign up for our website and start selling on the same day. 
you get instant access to our API, so you can start building and experimenting with no commitments at all. And once you're ready to go live and start selling, it's super simple. You don't need to speak to anyone if you don't want to. The process is totally self-service. There are no long contracts and paper signatures, just simple online terms and conditions. And there are no setup fees, just a simple monthly subscription and a fee per booking. And on that note, we'll share with you later in this webinar how we're helping the industry to recover in 2021 with a special offer. Put together, what does this all mean? First of all, we empower new travel sellers to launch faster. Let's take the example of Mia Travel, a new TMC based in Chile. Thanks to Duffel, they are able to get access to airline content and launch their product really, really quickly, starting to take real bookings and get customer feedback in no time. We also empower existing travel businesses to grow with more airlines, better fares and new ways to make money. Let's take Ulysse as an example. They're the top rated travel agent in France on Trustpilot, and they started using Duffel as one of our first customers back in 2019. Thanks to our great developer experience, they could connect and go live super quickly. And over time, they've been able to add more airlines and more functionality. So for example, selling bags. Today, in 2021, more than 30% of their bookings are made through Duffel. And finally, last but not least, we empower airlines to move forward with their distribution with lower costs, personalization, greater ancillary sales and more. We help airlines like Cathay Pacific to escape the shackles of traditional distribution and bring a richer experience to their customers. With that vision in mind, what did we do last year and what's coming next? First off, some highlights from 2020. Despite a tough year for the travel industry and for all of us, 2020 saw the Duffel team grow from 15 to 40 people, enabling us to move faster and support our customers better. We added a big start now button to our website, enabling anyone to sign up, officially making Duffel the first open API platform in travel. We went live with many new airline partners, including Cathay Pacific, Emirates, Transavia and United. And we also launched our first paid extras, baggages and seats. This works across our airlines with a one-time integration. And with these new capabilities, travel sellers can start to differentiate what they offer to their customers and also gain new opportunities for margin. And similarly, airlines also have the opportunities to increase their margin by increasing the sales of these valuable extras. So that's 2020. We've got lots more planned in 2021 and we'll be growing the team from around 40 to around 100 so we can continue to accelerate and serve our growing customer base of both travel sellers and airlines. In terms of product improvements, we've got too much planned for the year to be able to cover it all. So let me just give you a quick taste of quarter one, so January to March. First off, we'll be launching our groundbreaking new Change Flights functionality. The Change Flights feature will allow travel sellers to change their customers' flights, or even to put that power directly into the customer's hands thanks to our API. This will work across all airlines with one integration. No fare rules, no complicated calculations, we do it all for you. You'll be able to integrate this into your own tools using our API with one consistent integration across airlines, or if you don't want to build it yourself, you'll be able to make your changes from a simple dashboard. We'll also be launching delayed ticketing, or what we call pay later, enabling you to hold flights and then pay for them when you're ready. This is a great value add in leisure travel, and it's of course a necessity in the corporate world to elegantly deal with corporate approval processes. And of course, we have lots more airlines on the cards with Air Canada, Etihad and Qantas scheduled to launch this quarter. So now you've heard about our vision, what we worked in 2020 and our roadmap for the quarter. I'm now going to hand over to Tyler for some final remarks before we head into what you've all been waiting for, the Q&A. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm back again. Just going to pull up my screen here. So I know you've all been waiting eagerly for the Q&A at the end with Tim, Steve, and Nick. But before we do so, I just wanted to leave you all with a few closing remarks and talk to you about Duffel's response to COVID and how we're looking to help the industry recover in 2021. So as you all know, and I don't need to continue to say it, 2020 was a difficult year for the industry. And if you're like me, you breathe a huge sigh of relief when the year finally ended. As we thought about this year, 2021, 
and our launch in January and our new pricing plans, we wanted to figure out a way to help the industry as a whole build back better together from that difficult year. So the first thing we're doing this year is we're introducing a brand new starter tier that will be completely free of charge for 2021. Why are we doing this? So when we look back, travel innovation was hit particularly hard in 2020 with 62% less capital invested in new travel companies than was invested the prior year in 2019. So we wanted to find a way for these new travel companies to better access and ability to sell flights. And we figured by reducing the barriers to entry and, and offering a completely free starter tier with up to 50 orders per month, we could jumpstart innovation in the sector. And for the airlines, we hope it means a connection to a new generation of sellers. But we know that new travel companies were only the tip of the iceberg when it came to the widespread effects of the pandemic in 2020 with substantial revenue declines across the industry and lost jobs. And so we wanted to do our part in helping all companies get back on their feet and reduce their distribution costs. And for that, we've decided to waive fees on every customer's first thousand bookings in 2021 calendar year with Duffel. Already, we've begun to empower the next generation of travel companies. Tim mentioned many of these, Ulysse, Alternative Airlines, Mila. We have companies from large OTAs to startup TMCs on six of the seven continents. And as Tim mentioned, we've already started to move airlines to the next generation of distribution. And we have an aggressive roadmap ahead for the next few years on getting more airlines onto the platform. We know it will take an industry-wide effort to come back from what was one of the worst years on record in aviation, but with crisis always presents opportunity. And we truly believe that the future of travel is bright. Here at Duffel, we're on a mission to create a platform that drives new and exciting innovation across the sector for both the airlines and the travel sellers. But we're gonna need your help along this journey and we're gonna need your feedback on our product along the way. So I just have one question for the whole group today. Are you ready? Are you ready to help build the future of travel together? And I hope that many of you answered yes. And if you did and you haven't tried duffel.com or signed up, you can go to our website today to learn more and start selling flights at duffel.com. And with that, I want to hand it over to Nick, who's going to lead us through the Q&A for the group. I hope you enjoy the presentation today. Thank you very much, Tyler. Hi, a very good afternoon, good morning, and for me, good evening from Southeast Asia. Uh, we're here for the Q&A portion, um, and we'd like to invite uh, Tim and Steve back onto the virtual stage, please. So thank you very much for your questions. Very interesting ones that I'm spotting. Um, we're going to give Steve and Tim a good run for their time today. Um, so allow me to ask some of them. Uh, perhaps we can start. Uh, Steve and Tim, are you ready? These are going to be tough questions, yeah? So perhaps we can start with you unmuting. Is that right? By the way, if you see, if you wondered where I just popped out from, uh, I, I look after business development and sales at Duffel. I am from Duffel, so hello, everyone. Um, all right, Steve and Tim, let's start big picture, shall we? So Agatha asked, what about climate change and how will that kind of affect the travel industry? And your thoughts, uh, Steve, uh, from a big picture and maybe even Tim from a product perspective. Yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert on the topic, but um, I, um, I know there's been a, there's been a lot of uh, innovation on the on the use of, uh, of uh, synthetic fuels and, uh, and biofuels. So the airlines uh, are experimenting with that. Airbus has, I believe by end of 2030s, maybe 2039 or 2040, they want to have their first hydro hydrogen plane uh, in service. And then there's obviously a, a, lot of, um, a lot of developments happening around, the, um, around electric planes and electric propulsion. Um, the timeline for that is more like 2050. Uh, there's definitely uh, there's definitely a lot of innovation and a lot of resources that are poured it into uh, into sustainable aviation. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm confident that uh, over time we'll get to a very very good place. 
Thank you, Steve. Tim, would you like to jump in? Yeah, sure. I'd add from my side that I think there's stuff we can do in, in the product in order to in order to help to I guess help passengers to make the choice that's right for them um, when they're when they're making bookings. One way that we've already done that in the Duffel product today is that on every search result you get from a search with Duffel, no matter what airline it, the, the result comes from, we include information about carbon emissions. So that means that OTAs, TMCs, other travel sellers connecting with Duffel can easily provide that information in their search results and then surface it to their users. So for example, if you're an OTA and you want to allow your customers to sort results by their impact on the environment, we make that super easy from day one. You don't have to do any extra work to do that. And I anticipate that over time we'll work on more product features in order to enable that as this becomes a, a bigger and bigger demand. But already we've started on kind of day one thinking about this and how we can how we can give customers the information they want. And another way, another way we can do that as well, just to add on, on to what Tim was saying, is uh, uh, enabling um, carbon offset as an ancillary. Uh, so some airlines are already offering that, um, and uh, and uh, we could also potentially uh, tap into third-party providers in order to do that. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I think. The questions are coming fast and furious. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is to, to kind of touch on macro transfer. So some of us who are a bit more patient, please uh, ask for your patience. Uh, some of the more technical product, duffel product related stuff we'll definitely answer, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there, yeah? Uh, perhaps another broader question uh, we have for, for Steve and, and Tim is, you know, Steve, you mentioned uh, earlier that the airline industry is only open to those who are inside it. So the question is, do you think open industry standards like IATA perhaps, they, are they a key to solving this um, insight that you mentioned? I think they are one of the keys, uh, not the only one. Uh, the obviously uh, initiatives like NDC, One Orders and um, all of the all of the all other um, ongoing initiative at IATA of like pushing open standards have been a massive enabler for that to happen. But there is, um, there was another facet to my, to, to, to what I said earlier, which is um, the knowledge, right? There is just so much knowledge that has been accumulated over the years and that is sometimes not embedded in the software. It's like just things that are like people know that are passed around, uh, I want to say from, generation of travel agents to generation of travel agents. And, um, and that participates in, uh, in making the industry difficult to access and difficult to understand. Um, and, and so I think, yeah, open standards are part of the answer, but not the only one. Great, thank you. Tim, given your experience uh, with, with, with the industry, do you have anything else to add to that? No, I'd, I'd fully echo and agree with what Steve said. Great. Well, thank you very much. So I think that's a nice segue into the next question by, by Edel. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing uh, your name right. Without being too technical, uh, there are some in the audience who are slightly unfamiliar. What is the difference between the old standard and this new API standard that we are talking about? Do you want to take that one, Tim? Yeah, absolutely. So I'd say the, the big thing that we're aiming for with, with our product for developers is to, is to make the developer experience a joy and make it faster and easier to build things for people than it's, than it's ever been before. As my, as my vision part of the presentation kind of highlighted today, you, kind of, you have the basic building blocks to build, to build travel experiences and people have obviously been doing that on, online, particularly for, for, for decades now. But the the way that those APIs work from a perspective of ease of use just, just slows things down. Whether that's being quite clunky or just having not so great documentation or a lack of guides on how to use them. What we're really aiming to do is take away all that complexity and make it much simpler for people to get started and make it easy for people to, for people to build things. I'd say another big difference in terms of consistency. Even if you take a look at the traditional GDS APIs that people have been using for, for a long time now, one of the pain points there is that there can be significant differences between how different airlines behave. So let's say, for example, you connect today to get access to, to you, you start supporting flights and seat selection for British Airways. Then one day you want to turn on seat selection for Lufthansa. 
what you invariably find is that you have to make lots of changes to what you've already built, which causes a lot of pain, a lot of cost. One of the things that we're really aiming for in our platform and the way that we build it is around consistency. So making sure that things work in the same way between different airlines and different kind of processes so that it really is a one one time integration experience to get access to to get access to content from all sorts of airlines. So I'd say two big things there. The first is simplicity and developer experience, make it easy and fast to build the integration so that you, you can launch quicker, bring a great experience to your customers more quickly. And then second, secondly, having more consistency between how different airlines work, making it a single integration. So that total cost of ownership is much lower. You don't build something for one airline and then have to do that a hundred more times in the future, but instead, you spend the effort to build it once, we make it simple, and then it works across many airlines. Great, thank you so much. Um, that's a nice segue into the next question I have that came up quite a number of times. Uh, so there are obviously travel businesses uh, here today with us. And the question uh, they have, a very practical one is, how does what Duffel offers work alongside the GDS? And is there GDS content uh, within Duffel's API? So uh, today, no, uh, we, we, we don't have uh, GDS content uh, available through the Duffel APIs. As Tim was saying in this presentation, we only connect directly to the airlines and, uh, and offer the, the content that's there. But I'd add to that, that what most of our customers will be doing is, is mixing different sources of content together. So for example, if you're, a, if you're an existing OTA or a TMC and you already have a collection connection to Amadeus or Sabre or Travelport to get content, then it's really easy to mix that together with, with content from Duffel and then kind of prioritize in different cases, the one that makes more sense for you. So let's, let's take an example. You might be connected to Amadeus for most of your search and booking activities, but you might think actually British Airways, they're charging a GDS fee for distribution through GDSs and they're offering more ancillaries when I go down the kind of direct connection route with Duffel. So I'll send British Airways searches and bookings down the Duffel route and then I'll also, um, I'll also have the GDS running as well so I can get a full set of content. Over time, we'd unsurprisingly aspire to get to the point where we can serve all of a travel agency's needs, no matter what airline they want to book with. But today we're at a point where it's kind of realistically a mix of both in most cases. So maybe using the GDSs as the kind of backfill and then having your biggest, most important airlines through Duffel with richer content, more automation, more ancillaries and, and better prices as well, I would say. That said though, we do have quite a number of brand new startups that are only using Duffel. And that's because if you think about the kind of important airlines in many markets, we already have them. So if you take the EU, for example, we already have the kind of most dominant carriers available through Duffel. And we also have a nice option that we have a connection to a special provider called Harnet. That means that we can offer an extra set of airlines in a more kind of GDS type way. So in that, when you get an airline through Harnet, you might not get you might not get these kind of lower direct connection fares and you might not get a wide range of ancillaries, but you can at least search and book. So that helps to bring up from Duffel from 20 or so airlines to more like 300 or so. So that's a great option, particularly for new sellers that might not have a GDS connection. Great, thank you so much. Um, Tim and Steve, um, there's gonna be a, a tough question coming up. And although I'm from Duffel, I thought that it would be interesting to ask a tough question, right? Why not? All right, so maybe this one I'll start with, with Tim. I'll put you on the spot first. Um, I, I won't mention names here, but um, this is a really tough question, I think. So, so we've said that travel is frictionless. And here's the challenge to ask, how can you say travel is frictionless if customers can only sell point to point through NDC, whereas the GDS powers the ability to connect various airlines into one itinerary? Um, Tim, would you like to to take a you know take a stab at that one or plus Steve. Yeah absolutely I'm I'm really happy to help with that one. Um I'd I'd say basically that for the vast majority of itineraries that customers actually want to book day to day there it's perfectly possible to, to book and fulfill those through Duffel. Um, there are obviously some esoteric options. I mean because of the type of question here we're going to end up in some more technical terms. I'm going to throw them out there. But a GDS, for example, might enable more itineraries that use interlining, but they're not the vast majority of, of things that customers are actually booking. In most cases, it, it's much more common for people to be booking things that use code share arrangements, for example. And in those cases, they'll generally be available through Duffel. So let's say we have a connection to Lufthansa, which we do. 
they might have a code share with a with another airline in in star alliance for example like you could say egypt air for example even though we don't have a connection to egypt air we're able to sell certain egypt air flights thanks to our connection to lufthansa group and they would be available through us so whilst they might i think what i'd say here is that there might technically be less options in some cases there are some very esoteric options that sometimes people would book but are quite uncommon but the kind of core core options so flights operated and marketed by the same carrier and those code shares where there's a, an agreement between two airlines to, to share the same flight numbers or to offer each other's flights under this under their own flight numbers those are things that you can already book through duffel great thank you very much steve anything else to add to what tim has just mentioned just at the very high level something that i think is, is important is that um I mean, we, we talked about the future of travel and that, that this frictionless experience and how the democratization of the, the infrastructure was, was really critical. But I think um, as with any like great leap uh, in technology, there is always a, a stage that you go through where uh, it can seem like a step back. You kind of need to like go back to the basic and rebuild on top of it. And so I think there's, um, there's a lot of focus on uh, some of the more advanced use cases uh, that have been possible uh, on the GDS. But what we have to remember is that uh, these technology have been uh, built over decades and decades and decades, and we're not going to uh, be able to make that major leap without taking the hit on, on some of the some of the, the functionalities that were there uh, uh, in the first place. So just uh, not specifically on interlining, but more of a broader point. Um, yeah, I'd echo that and say, as, as, I, as I tried to not very successfully say in, in my answer, I'd, I'd encourage people to focus on the things that they're doing every day or, you know, 90% of the time and maybe to focus less on these really uncommon cases. Um, over time, we'll be able to work on these things and, and add more and more. But the kind of the search and book experience, having a great flow around changes and being able to sell more ancillaries is probably in most cases going to be more common than very esoteric flight options with, you know, 10 different flights across five different airlines. Um, we're unsurprisingly focused on what adds the most value for customers and we've we've kind of focused on the the core functionality first and over time in response to feedback from from people like you we'll be able to address more and more of these things and, and make the product better and better great thank you and the only thing i'll add to that is for practicality of today um, i think as, as tim mentioned before if you are a travel agent today there's ability to to use both the gds and uh, ndc or direct connect and having a hybrid of the two gets you, allows you to get the best of both worlds as NDC you know, expands its adoption um, in the travel uh, distribution space. Yeah, So that's just a practical point for me. Uh, we're coming short on time. So I think it'll be quick fire round, Tim and, and Steve. I'm just gonna throw out a question and let's see, give a short uh, punchy answer. Is all right? Uh, so question. Uh, are we only doing flights? Are we doing other travel verticals? Today, yes. Um, today, yes. I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, next question. Um, can you touch on the value of delayed ticketing and that will bring to OTAs? Maybe, Tim? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. So I guess historically, delayed ticketing, so the ability to hold a flight and pay for it later has been something that's been a big focus for the corporate world. And that's because often corporates will have kind of approval processes where a manager needs to approve a trip and holding holding the ticket allows that to be kind of facilitated in the leisure world that's been less common but i think it's potentially a really big opportunity for for leisure focused travel sellers for example if you go to britishairways.com and you go to book a flight as a as a customer you can often pay say 5 pounds to hold a flight for 24 hours and that 5 pounds is just pure margin for the airline it's it's a great way of making money so why is it that online travel agents shouldn't offer that we want to empower that and create new ways for sellers to make money that they couldn't do before. Thank you, Tim. Another one for you, Tim, quick fire. Um, how do you handle flight modification instantly through API? So that's a, that's a feature that we're working on at the moment. It's something that I, that I talked about in the roadmap for, for Q1. Um, the simple answer without going into too much detail is that's just part of the magic of Duffel. We, we find out what your customer wants to change, where they want to go or the, or the difference in the dates. And then we come back to you with a set of pre-priced, ready to go options. You pick one, pay any extra and you're ready to go. And from the end of this quarter, that'll be available both in our API. So you can automate stuff with it or through our dashboard. So if you don't want to build something, it's ready to go there as well. 
great. And maybe a final question for Steve. Will there be a white label solutions uh, available for customers? There was mention of SDKs and modules and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a ton that we want to, to build on top of the, the API. Um, so client SDKs, uh, client libraries is, is definitely uh, one of the things that we'll invest in. Um, and the white label version, we, we probably won't go as far as, as building a white label platform that, uh, that you can just stick your logo on and, and uh, start using. At least it's not uh, in, the, in the near term roadmap. However, we want to build components, uh, user interface components that you can easily drop into your website or your application in order to build the most common uh, functionalities that you would find on the, on the travel booking website. So things like um, the search, the list of results from a search, the search form, the checkout form, seat selection, baggages, all of these, uh, all of these items. Thank you so much, Steve. I really wish I could address all the, the 50 odd questions here, but thank you so much. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be sending the content of this video out to all of you who, who have participated. And so that ends our Q&A section and I'll hand you back over to our MC, Tyler. Tyler, please, thank you. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, just for the rest of the group, if there was anything we didn't get to today or you have other questions you didn't get a chance to drop in the Q&A, please feel free to send us an email at hello at duffel.com. We're just gonna to end today by sharing the results of the poll from earlier so that the whole group can see it and doing one more poll. Um, before we share the results, uh, if we could just put up the second poll here, which is about future topics that we'll cover in our webinars this year. And we hope you all join for future ones. I'll give everyone a minute to answer this and then we'll share with the broader group, both the results from the earlier poll, so we can see that. Um, and then we'll let you know what our future webinars will be um, through email in the coming weeks. All right, um, if we wanted to share the results from the poll with everyone, so you can see from earlier, so it looks like we have a, a little bit of optimism on the recovery time, but still a few years out and very excited to see that people feel the distribution model should change. We hope that we can get there um, with you all building together. So with that, that wraps up our webinar. I'm just gonna go to the last slide here and thank you. I wanna thank our presenters today and everyone for coming out. Uh, we will have more of these, like I said, in the coming months. If there's anything that you also feel could be improved about these or you have feedback, you can also drop us that over an email. If you head out to duffel.com today, feel free to go there and sign up for an account and start exploring the API. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone.